which drug decreases the production. To know that, first we need to know how aqueous is produced. Hmm? Now, aqueous is produced by ciliary blood vessels. The ciliary blood vessels, they will bring the blood to the eye and that blood is filtered to form aqueous. So, if we cause vasoconstriction of these blood vessels, less blood will come. So, less aqueous will be produced. So, basically, any drug which is causing vasoconstriction of ciliary blood vessels can decrease the aqueous here. Now, we will discuss the action of different drugs in glaucoma. Now, glaucoma, we all know, it is increase in intraocular pressure and the intraocular pressure increases maybe because of increase in production of aquasium or it may be drained less. The two major reason of increasing the IOP may be either more aqueous is produced or less aqueous is drained. So, if we want to decrease the aqueous humor or decrease the glaucoma, treat the glaucoma, we can have two methods, one which decrease the production and second which increase the drainage. We will discuss these one by one. First of all, which drug decrease the production? To know that, first we need to know how aqueous is produced. Hmm? Now, aqueous is produced by ciliary blood vessels. The ciliary blood vessels, they will bring the blood to the eye and that blood is filtered to form aqueous. So, if we cause vasoconstriction of these blood vessels, less blood will come. So, less aqueous will be produced. So, basically, any drug which is causing vasoconstriction of ciliary blood vessels can decrease the aqueous here. And for causing the vasoconstriction, we need to know which receptors are present on the blood vessels. And we know we have two types of receptors, alpha 1 which cause vasoconstriction and beta 2 which cause vasodilation. So, alpha 1 agonist can be used for decreasing the aqueous and beta 2 blockers can be used to decrease the aqueous. So, two types of drugs we can use, one which stimulate alpha 1 receptor, stimulate alpha 1 receptors. Here we have further two types of drugs, one are adrenaline like drug, adrenaline and a DP wafer. And second, we have apraclonidin like drugs, apraclonidin and bremonidin. Adrenaline and DP wafer, they stimulate alpha receptors and cause vasoconstriction. Whereas apraclonidin and bremonidin, they are mainly acting on alpha 2 receptors, but post synaptic alpha 2 receptor. Remember, post synaptic alpha 2 receptor is like alpha 1, that means it also causes vasoconstriction. So, basically, all of them cause vasoconstriction to decrease the formation of aqueous. On the other hand, beta blockers can be used for decreasing the production of aqueous. So, beta 2 is causing vasodilation. When we block beta 2, vasoconstriction occur and aqueous production decreases. Okay? So, these are the drugs which can decrease the production. Then coming to drugs which can increase the drainage, increase the outflow. Now, aqueous outflow can be increased by two main type of drugs. One, which increase the trabecular outflow and second which increase the uvo scleral outflow. Now, after the formation of aqueous humor, it is drained by two pathways. The major pathway is trabecular outflow and it is this area which is present in the angle. So, we divide the glaucoma into open angle and closed angle because it is this aridocorneal angle which contain the drainage point and that drainage point is called canal of Schlem. So, canal of Schlem is present in the angle, iridocorneal angle and trabecular outflow is that outflow. Right? Whereas, uveoscleral outflow normally do not play much role. So, you can remember that this is an emergency drainage. When normally it cannot be drained, then it can be drained from this path. Yeah? So, if we increase the trabecular outflow, the we can treat the glaucoma and that can be done by meiotics.
remember whenever the iris contract that means whenever the pupil dilates it will cause more obstruction to the angle that means trabecular outflow is stopped so that's why midriatic drugs they can precipitate acute attack of glaucoma in patient with angle closure glaucoma so meiotics will do it opposite okay? so meiotic drugs like pilocarpine they are useful in angle closure glaucoma by removing this block and increasing the trabecular outflow on the other hand, the emergency drainage can be opened by a prostaglandin. So, prostaglandin F2 alpha, it is used for uveo scleral outflow. And in fact, prostaglandin F2 alpha drug is latanoprost. It is a drug of choice for open angle glaucoma. Primary open angle glaucoma, latanoprost is now drug of choice. Clear? So, now we will move to adverse effects of anti-glaucoma drugs which are asked in the exams so you can remember first of all meiotic drugs meiotic drugs meiotic drugs they can result in cataract cataract particularly caused by acetylcholine esterase inhibitors like uh, physostigmine ecothiophate and second, they can cause stenosis of nasolacrimal duct. Stenosis of nasolacrimal duct. And plus we know that they are causing contraction of ciliary muscle. These are cholinergic drugs. So they can also result in spasm of accommodation. Spasm of accommodation. Adverse effect of meiotics. When spasm of accommodation occurs, the person will develop headache around the eyebrows, so known as broic. Okay? So headache around the in the forehead, around the eyebrows. Okay? So that is the meiotic drugs. Then we can see the adverse effect of prostaglandin analogs, PGF2 alpha, like latanoprost. So they produce three major side effects in the eye, and you can remember them P for pigmentation these cause pigmentation of iris the term used for that is heterochromia iridis heterochromia iridis adverse effect of prostaglandins then g means growth of eyelashes growth of eyelashes the term used is hypertrichosis hyper trichosis so a lot of eye lashes will be produced and in fact this side effect of hyper trichosis it is being utilized nowadays for treatment of hypotrichosis if eye lashes are lesser we can give latanoprost to increase the eye lashes and third they can cause macular edema macular edema and that you can remember F for fluid in the macula. Fluid in the macula means edema. So macular edema is the side effect of latanoprost group of drugs. And plus you all remember they are prostaglandins. So they can cause inflammation and inflammation means they can precipitate uveitis. Okay? So they should not be given to a patient with the uveitis. Okay? Then moving to adverse effects of apraclonidine. If you see the name apraclonidine, the name says it causes lid retraction. Lid retraction is the important side effect seen with apraclonidine. Apraclonidine causes lid retraction. Then another similar drug known as bremonidine. Bremonidine. It causes brain suppression. Both apraclonidine and bremonidine can cause. More important with the bremonidine, the name says it causes brain suppression. Brain suppression leading to apnea. Apnea can occur. And the risk is higher in the newborn babies, usually up to two years. So it is contraindicated in children less than two years so you can remember it causes br for brain suppression in i for infants it causes brain suppression in infants so young babies it is contraindicated okay? 
देन वी हैव एडवर्स इफेक्ट ऑफ एपीनेफ्रिन एड्रीनालिन एड्रीनालिन इट इज मेटाबोलाइज टू फॉर्म एड्रीनोक्रोम सो वेन एड्रीनालिन इज गिवन एज आई ड्रॉप्स विद द exposure to oxygen exposure to air it is oxidized to form adrenochrome and this is a black colored pigment which will deposit on conjunctiva so if question is asked which drug causes black pigmentation of conjunctiva it is adrenaline so read very carefully pigmentation of iris is caused by prostaglandins but black pigmentation of conjunctiva is caused by epinephrine Okay. so these are the important adverse effects of anti glaucoma drugs